Hello, my name is Anya, and today we are going to use the Stripe Payments Dashboard to create a product, create a payment link, allow the user to choose however much they want to pay or donate in this case, and then retrieve information back using checkout sessions and the Stripe API about how much money they donated. Here I'm on my Stripe dashboard. You just need to go to Stripe, create an account, and go to Developers, and then you get this page. I'm on the home page, and I'm currently in test mode, so I'm not actually using live data, actual money. I'm going to go down here to More and scroll all the way down to Product Catalog, and let's click on that. Here we can see that I have no products currently, and I'm going to click to add a product. A product is a product or service that the user, when they use Stripe to buy with, will be purchasing. So I'm going to make this a donation model. Donate to my organization. And here we have some options. So I'm going to choose a one-off payment. And here I can put in $20, and that's how much they would have to donate. But I want them to be able to choose the amount. So I'm going to go over here to advanced pricing options. And here with our pricing model, instead of choosing a flat rate, a single fixed price, I'm going to choose customer chooses the price. So they can choose how much to donate. But I also want them to donate at least $20. So I'm going to click set limits and add a minimum amount. And so that they see the limit, I'm going to put in a 20 as the preset default. Now, this is extra, but for now, this serves our purpose. And I'm going to click Add Product. Now that my product's added, I'm going to click on it again. We can see some more detail. I'm going to scroll. Here to pricing, price API ID, created, and then over here we see this create payment link. link. I'm going to click on this. This is a window that Stripe creates from where the user can donate to my organization. So it's already using the title of the product in the description. I'm just going to capitalize that nicely. And it's using the same preset limits and a maximum. We can click advanced options, but I don't really care about this right now. And after payment, I'm just going to say show a confirmation message. And let's create the link. Now, how do we connect this to a bubble? We don't actually need to use an API or anything. This is not going to look very nice. I just want to show the general idea. I'm going to have a button that says donate. I'm going to add a workflow on that button. And all I'm going to do is open an external website. And our destination is going to be this payment link over here. Let's preview this. Or actually, I'm going to go here and click open in a new tab. I'll have to reload. I can click Donate, and we see we are shown this Stripe checkout page. Now, let's say I want to donate $50. How does Bubble know at the end that you've donated $50? So I do this, I put in my information, I pay $50. And that's it. I'm not redirected back to my app. I can't say that Anya donated $50. And I can't save that information anywhere in my data over here, for example. Maybe I have an object called a field on the user called donations and it's just a list of amounts. But I can never create a new donation because I don't really know how much they donated. The solution to this is URL parameters. 
in our payment link, I'm going to go here and click edit. We have this option for after payment. Right now, we're just showing a confirmation page like this. But instead, we're going to say don't show a confirmation page and instead redirect our customers to redirect my customers to my website. Now that website's over here, so I'm going to paste that in so they know where to send it. And we can see that there are some more advanced cases with a session ID, for example. So I'm going to add this over here and add another URL parameter. This is going to say ID is equal to checkout session ID. And I'm going to copy that and paste that at the end over here. Now I'm going to update our link. So here I just donated and I can see some string of characters over here, which is our session ID. In order to see this one error that I had made before is over here in our URL instead of a question mark, let's just replace that with an and symbol. And that's going to allow the URL parameter to stay in the URL. And I'm just going to click update link. Now I just want to visually show you how we can retrieve this URL. Over here, I want to say the session ID and then display whatever's here. The way we retrieve that is by going to insert dynamic data, get data from page URL, and the parameter we're looking for is called ID, which is what we wrote right over here. I'm just going to click close, and now when we reload this page, we see this string of characters right over here. So now we have just this really long text. How do we convert this? How do we use this to actually see what amount we're looking for? Well, the way we need to do that is actually with an API call. So with Bubble, you need to set up APIs by going into plugins and then installing the API connector. You would just want to click add plugins and it's just the first one there, or you can search it up over here. Now that it's installed, you want to click add another API. We're just going to call this Stripe. And this is just the overall header for the API. What that means is that for every call to Stripe, we're going to include some sort of authorization token so it knows that we are able to be using their API. We're registered. So you want to write authorization, bearer, and then we're going to get a key to add in here. Over here in our Stripe dashboard, let's click home and then API keys for developers. We're brought here and I'm going to click reveal test secret key. Right now this is all test mode, so it's fake money. I'm going to just click on that to copy it and paste it in here after bearer. Now when we make a call to Stripe, it knows that we are a valid person and it's going to be able to give us information back. Now let's set up the specific call. I'm just going to expand this and click get session info as the name of this. Now I'm going to go over here to our Stripe Docs API. You can just search this up and it should come up or type this URL in. I'm going to scroll on the sidebar over here down to checkout and then sessions because right now we have a checkout session ID and we want to retrieve information about it. What we need is this URL right here. This is in curl while bubble reads JSON, but I'm just going to copy over this URL because it's the same for both and just paste it in there. Now, after sessions, I'm going to add another slash and then two square brackets and in between just write ID. Now, Bubble will know that this is a dynamic data, so it's going to automatically open up this thing below where we can add in an ID. For this call to initially be initialized, we need to have a valid ID, so I'm going to copy this one in and paste it right here. I'm also going to uncheck private so we are able to dynamically update this value. 
Now let's click initialize. We can see that it's successful because we didn't get any error values and this information was returned. It automatically assigns the type with a data type and we can just click save. Now that we have this set up, we can display and retrieve the amount. So I'm gonna say you donated and then let's dynamically say how much. For this, I'm going to insert dynamic data and click get data from an external API. And the API provider is gonna be the one that we just set up, the Stripe get session info. It automatically populates with the default, but we wanna use dynamic data. So we're gonna say get data from page URL, what we did to display it in this text box over here, but instead we wanna retrieve it and pass it in as a parameter on this API call. Now that we've got that, we're passing it in. This is retrieving the session ID from the URL. And then we can click close. Now that we're getting everything that this get session info retrieves back, we want to only see what's important to us, which is this amount total. The amount total is going to include two zeros at the end without actually including a period. So for example, if I donated $20, this would return 2000. So what we need to do is divide it by 100. Then we can format it as a currency. I'm going to put two decimal places. Oh, I'm going to say zero decimal places, use a comma as my thousand separator, and say USD because I'm currently in the US, but you would use whatever currency is appropriate for you. Now let's reload. On this, I donated $20, and we can see that that's what comes up over here. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. And I just want to say that since we now know how to display this information, we could use the same idea to save it into the database and do a lot of creative things. So I hope you have fun building with this.